the Battle of Yan Province was initiated when Zhang Miao and Chen Gong rebelled against their master Tao Tao, who was conquering many counties in Shu Province. By assisting Lu Bu in taking over Tao's base in Yan Province, they forced their previous master to withdraw from his campaign to recapture his home base. The battle lasted for at least a hundred days without a decisive victor, which then caused a famine. It took two years for Tao's forces to completely regain control over all the cities in Yan Province. During Zhang Miao's tenure, when he held jurisdiction over Chen Liu, he befriended Lu Bu. Lu had recently left Yuan Shao to join Zhang Yang, but passed by Chen Liu on the way. Yuan Shao was furious when he heard of their new relationship, as he was already in a feud with Zhang Miao, but was also on good terms with Tao Tao at the time. This caused Zhang Miao to fear that the two might ally together to attack him, so he felt very uncomfortable. Chen Gong also felt unsure about his position, so he persuaded Zhang Miao to send an invitation to Lu Bu by saying, their empires divided and fallen, and the brave men rise up together. With the forces of a thousand Li, you occupy a land which is open on four sides to war. You hold your sword and you look around proudly, and you are good enough to be a leader of men. Yet you prefer to take your orders from another, isn't that mean-spirited? The provincial army is away fighting in the east, so this area is empty. Lu Bu is a strong soldier and a superb fighting man. Call him in for a while, govern Yan province together, Watch the situation of the empire and wait for the changes of circumstance. Now is the ideal time for such a strategic move. Zhang Miao agreed with Chen Gong, who led his men eastward to meet Lu Bu at Puyang, which was being defended by Xie Ha Dun. Zhang Miao attempted to reassure Xun Yue by claiming to have enlisted Lu Bu's aid in capturing Shu province, and that he should prepare supplies for the additional army. The officials became suspicious and confused over this news, which actually tipped Xun Yue off instead. He called for reinforcements from Xia Hadun, who led a lightly armed force towards Zhuan Cheng. He encountered Lu Bu's army, then engaged him in battle, but Lu quickly withdrew to take advantage of Pu Yang's absent defenders by conquering it. Xia Hadun was caught in a plot, then captured, but heroically had his life saved by Han Hao. They settled the troops, then continued on to Zhuan Cheng, reinforcing the small garrison there. Zhang Miao and Chen Gong had been in correspondence with numerous lords within Yan province, so Li Xian was sent by Tao Tao to reaffirm the support of the locals. He was killed by Xu Lan and Li Feng, so Lu Bu once more seized the opportunity by declaring himself the new governor of Yan. Various commanderies and counties responded to his call and defected over to his side. Only Zhuan Cheng, Dong'e and Fan counties remained loyal to Tao Tao. Deserters from Lu Bu's army had already informed Xun Yue about Chen Gong's plotting, so the people knew he would soon march south across the river to capture the holdout cities. At that time, Shun Yue was in charge of the defences at Zhuan Cheng, and his firm actions saved the city from capture. Xie Hadun, who had recently arrived, proved his value when he executed some rebel plotters one night and worked well with Shun Yue to hold the city. He warned Shun Yue to not meet with the suspicious Guo Gong, who had brought some tens of thousands of men to the city gates, but Shun Yue went anyway and was able to send Guo Gong away without any conflict. Xie Hadun was a core part of Tao's loyalists, defending the last remaining holdings in the east of Yan. Shun Ye and Cheng Ye agreed that the defences within the three counties could only hold out if the officials in charge worked together. Cheng Ye was then sent to oversee Dong Er, where he could better rally his hometown to fight for him. The whole province has rebelled, and only these three cities remain. Chen Gong and his fellows will attack them with a strong force. Unless we have something to bolster their confidence, all three will certainly change sides. The people look up to you. Go and encourage them. And so Cheng Ye departed. On his way past Fan County, he encountered an official under Lu Bu, trying to persuade the local prefect to switch sides. Cheng Ye convinced the prefect to remain loyal. I have heard that Lu Bu holds your mother and your younger brother, your wife and your children. As a filial son, how can you bear this? But the empire is now in great disorder, and brave men rise up against one another. It is the way of a wise man to judge and choose the leader who can truly take control and end the disorder. He who finds his true lord will prosper, but the man who makes a bad choice will die. Lu Bu is a common man's hero. He's rough. He has small affection for anyone else. He's brutal and arrogant. Just for the moment, Chen Gong and his fellows are obliged to be friendly with him, but they will never accept him as their chief. Though he has many soldiers, he will come to nothing in the end. By contrast, the wisdom and strategy of Commissioner Tao are not of this world, but rather gifts from heaven. They pretended to receive Lu Bu's official graciously, but in reality they set soldiers in ambush to kill him. They then returned to the garrison at Fan. By the time Cheng Ye arrived at Dong'e, the appropriate defences had already been set up, so he split his cavalry into two, then took control of the Kangting Ford. This manoeuvre successfully repelled the advances of Lu Bu's strategist Cheng Gong, 
who was then forced to turn back upon arrival. Cheng Yu met regularly with Xu Ti at Dong Er, where they formulated a strategy which enabled the defences of the three counties to hold out. Lu Bu made moves towards Zhuan Cheng, but the success of Xie Hadun and Shen Yu made it impossible to seize, so he unhappily retreated west to camp at Puyang. Tao Tao heard news of the rebellion, and immediately assigned Yu Jin and Tao Hong as the vanguard, then withdrew his forces from Xu in a hasty return. Li Zheng was given command of his father's old troops, then successfully avenged his death. Lu Bu's rebellion was a major setback for Tao, but he analysed it could have been far worse if Lu had been more competent. Lu Bu obtained the province in a single day. What he should have done then was seize Dongping and cut the roads through Kangfu and Taishan, holding the passes and strategic points against me. Instead, he just stayed in camp at Puyang. Now I know he is incompetent. In essence, if Lu Bu skirted Zhuan Sheng to the eastern border instead of retreating, and if Cheng Gong had not been stopped at the Kangting crossing, then Tao Tao would have become isolated and low on supplies. Lu Bu had continued to occupy Puyang since its capture by setting up a string of outposts up to 15 miles west of the city. When Tao's main force returned, he led a night raid on the outposts to cut the communication lines of Lu Bu and isolate him. Ye Jin destroyed two of Lu Bu's camps at the south of the city, whilst his subordinate defeated Gao Ya at Xu Chang. Historically, Xie Hadun was hit in the left eye by a stray arrow during a skirmish when Tao's main force returned to Yan, not at the Battle of Xia Pi. Before Tao could return to his battle lines, Lu Bu appeared on the battlefield, so he was now the one isolated. The fighting went on from dawn to dusk, but both sides were evenly matched. Despite this, Yu Jin's contributions in those battles were still recognised by his superior. Tao knew a prolonged fight would end in his defeat, so he asked for volunteers to break the enemy lines, then Dian Wei stepped forward. He ordered dozens of men to put on two layers of armour, throw away their shields and only use spears and pikes. He led his small sortie of soldiers against Lu Bu's battle line as archers rained arrows upon them. Lu Bu's men charged forward, but Dian Wei waited until they were very close, then suddenly lashed out at them. With his twin halberds, he cut a path through the men and they were forced to flee. When the sun was setting, Tao Tao was finally able to make his retreat. Meanwhile, within Puyang, the Tian clan changed sides and threw open the eastern gate for Tao Tao, whose forces quickly stormed the city. He burned the passes to show he had no sign of retreat, but this proved disastrous. Lu Bu's tight defences prevented any advancement, leaving Tao Tao trapped in the inferno. It's here that Tao Tao was actually captured by Lu Bu's men, but they didn't know what he looked like. Tao pointed to a random soldier on horseback, exclaiming that Tao Tao was escaping, so Lu Bu's men quickly left in pursuit. Tao then suffered the fires by the east gate and fled back to his camp to make preparations for another assault. The hostilities between Tao and Lu Bu had continued for over three months, with both sides stuck in a deadlock. Fighting eventually dimmed down when a plague of locusts beset the area, which led to a great famine causing many to starve. Tao withdrew to Zhuan Cheng, but was also offered a place of shelter for his family in Yi City by Yuan Shao. He thought about accepting, until Cheng Yu convinced him otherwise when he said, It appears, General, that you get flustered under pressure. How else could you contemplate such a foolish move? Yuan Shao has designs upon the Empire, but he is not nearly clever enough. Could you really accept him as your leader? You have the majesty of a dragon or a tiger. Are you prepared to play a role for him until your usefulness has reached its end and you are killed? Even if Yan province is lost, you still possess three cities and at least 10,000 fine soldiers. With your military genius, and with Shun Yu, me, and others to gather men for your service, you may yet become hegemon. Please think again. Cheng Yu's heroic speech was way easier to say than to actually do, because the army had already been running low on food. Tao agreed to follow his guidance, but only if he could prepare three days worth of food. Not wanting to be disgraced, Cheng Yu devised an insanely vicious strategy. He personally led an armed force to pillage his hometown. He abducted his townsfolk, who were then slaughtered like pigs for Tao Tao's army to feed on. Lu Bu had also used up all of his grain, provisions and horse feed, so fled to a city south of Zhuan Cheng presumably to find fresh supplies, but he was chased out, then forced eastward to Shanyang in the southeast of Yan province. Xu Lan and Li Feng were garrisoned in the north of Shanyang, which soon came under siege by Tao Tao. Lu Bu attempted to relieve the city, but when the battle was lost, his officers were executed. He withdrew to Dong Min, where he reunited with Cheng Gong, who had over 10,000 soldiers to bolster their ranks. Around this time, news of Dao Xian's death had reached Tao Tao, so he contemplated returning to conquer Xu province, but Shen Yu warned against it. 
he imposed the importance to first remove Lubu as a threat and suggested to collect the harvest in order to starve him out. The populace benefited greatly from Shia Haddon's leadership when he constructed a reservoir and personally helped the peasants carry soil whilst his troops planted rice. The majority of the soldiers went about collecting the harvest, but this left Tao Tao severely unmanned with less than a thousand men at his disposal. Dian Wei was put in command of hundreds of personal bodyguards who patrolled the areas around Tao Tao's tent, whilst women were elected to post on watch duty, which maintained an effective defence. Lu Bu's forces arrived once more, but fell into an ambush set by Tao Tao, who hid half his men and used the other half as bait. He scored a decisive victory here, which forced Lu Bu and Chen Gong to flee to Shu province. Next, Tao turned his attention back westwards, first capturing the city of Ding Tao, then dispersing his armies to pacify the region. Tao Ren attacked Lu Bu's subordinate Liu Hu at Guo Yang, and captured the enemy commander alive. Zhang Miao fled to Shu Chun, looking to Yuan Shu for support, whilst leaving his brother Zhang Chao to defend Yong Xiu. Zhang Miao was killed en route to his destination, whilst Yong Xiu was sieged for some months before it was captured. Yue Jin served as the vanguard for the siege, of which Yue Jin also took part in. Yue Jin also battled Xiao Rui at Ku County. In both battles, he was the first to break the enemy's defences. Zhang Chao quickly committed suicide once the city was breached, then Tao Tao exterminated Zhang Miao's clan to three degrees, thus putting an end to the rebellions in Yan province. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.